After a long silence, Praveg Dynamics has officially announced their first production EV. This isn't a prototype or a concept. This is the real deal. They're going to be selling these to consumers. Welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host. And take a look at this clip from Praveg Dynamics' YouTube channel. This year, we're launching a vehicle for sale uh, in limited numbers, but uh, not so limited numbers. Super hot SUV, 5 meters long. 500 kilometers range, 410 horsepower, all-wheel drive. So this year, post Diwali, you can book yours and you will be able to feel the design, see the capabilities and order it online. Now, if you want to watch the full video, you can find a link to it in the description down below, along with links to everything else that we're going to be talking about in this video. But take a look at this. This is what the EV is actually going to look like. Obviously, this is just a render. There are no photographs at this point of the vehicle. Pravig is keeping those under lock and key. But this is actually a really interesting departure for the company from their original business model, which was going to be services based. Basically, they were going to be offering a luxury ride hailing service. But now it seems like they're pivoting more towards actually selling selling these vehicles to consumers as a product. Now, Praveg has said that this is going to be a small batch of vehicles sold to a select handful of people, but we've also seen this approach taken by other EV manufacturers in the past, most noteworthy of which is Tesla. They sold their Roadster back in 2008 to just 2,450 people. Now, I don't know if selling these vehicles to consumers is going to be a permanent fixture of their business model, or if this is just something that they're doing temporarily to get publicity, and then later on they're going to revert back to their previous business model of offering these EVs as a service. But when we asked our viewers which Indian startup they were most excited to see succeed, we saw a number of people mentioning Praveg. But the thing is, of course, Praveg has been pretty silent for most of 2022. They've been developing this EV in stealth mode. But finally, now we get a pretty clear picture of what it's going to look like. I personally think that it looks pretty cool, much better than the Mark 1, and kind of feels like a mix between the Tesla Cybertruck and the Tata Nexon EV. Now, obviously, it's a little bit too early to know when this Praveg SUV EV is going to start shipping, but there's another very exciting Indian electric car that we do now have some specifics on, Ola's electric car, which, according to the company, will be purchasable in 2024. In fact, according to Bhavish Agarwal, Ola Electric is currently building the capacity to produce 1 million of these cars every single year. Now, the way that Bhavish frames this new electric car against the backdrop of India's current automotive industry is pretty interesting. He calls out current legacy players in the car industry and says that their cars are dull and boring. And in his own words, Indian car makers are conservative, thinking that we only want small cars or maybe mid-sized cars. And the implication here, of course, is that Ola Electric's car is going to be different, that it's going to be bigger, which is an interesting design choice, choosing not to go along with the flow of the industry and instead going against it. And it's hard to figure out what people are actually feeling about this, whether the public is responding positively or negatively to this design choice. Ola Electric has turned off comments on their video, so we can't see how people are actually reacting. But we took a community poll and this is what you guys said. One person pointed out that everyone is criticizing Ola scooters, but most people don't appreciate that Ola is now developing their own battery cell. Another person said that if the price is less than 15 lakh rupees for this electric car and it provides a realistic range of 400 kilometers, then it will be their future car. Two people said that it's too early to comment or say anything at this point. Another person said that they just want Ola Electric to do it right and learn from the mistakes that they had during their first product launch. And then finally, one person said that Ola is wasting investors' money and that they first need to be good in the two-wheeler segment. Now, besides the electric car, Bhavish Agarwal also made a couple of other announcements as well. For example, Ola Electric is going to be relaunching the original S1 scooter, which will be cheaper than the current S1 Pro at 99,999 rupees. And the S1 Pro, by the way, is priced at 1.39 lakh rupees. And then also, Bhavish announced that they're going to be setting up three big production plants, one for their electric scooters, their two-wheelers, one for their four-wheelers, their electric cars, and one for their batteries. So these factories, according to Bavish, will produce 1 million cars, 10 million two-wheelers, and 100 gigawatts of cell capacity every single year. All right, next up, let's move on to our bird's eye segment now, because at least nine Indian startups have raised more than a million dollars this week, with the total coming in at $122 million raised across India's entire startup ecosystem. 
So in first place this week, we have e-commerce solution startup GRASS. That's an acronym for growth as a service. And these guys have raised 32% of all the funds this week. That's $40 million. After that, we have one logistics company, ShipRocket, raising 27% of all the funds. That's $33.5 million. And this funding round actually pushed them over the threshold and made them a unicorn company. That's the 106th unicorn in India so far. Also, I actually interviewed the founder of ShipRocket back in 2019. So if you want to watch that interview, you can find a link to it in the top right corner of your screen. Now, after ShipRocket, we have creator economy focused startup Philo. They raised 12% of all the funds this week. That's $15 million. And these guys are offering creator consented data like identity, income, and engagement across hundreds of platforms. And then finally, we have one startup in the EV space, Exponent Energy, and they've raised 10% of all the funds this week. That's $13 million. And what these guys are doing is building batteries and battery charging solutions for EV companies. Now, obviously, when it comes to funding this week was a little bit slow for Indian startups. And if you compare to last week when Indian startups raised $421 million, then this $122 million is 71% less than that. But do keep in mind that I'm filming this video on Thursday. So by the time you're watching this video, that number, $122 million, might have gone up considerably. So if you want more up-to-date information on all of the funds that Indian startups are raising every single week, then be sure to sign up for our newsletter. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment down below. All right, next up, just a couple of quick updates for you guys. First of all, PhonePay is going to be creating a grocery delivery service, and it's going to be on ONDC. Now, if you don't know what ONDC is, make sure to watch the video that we made explaining the topic. We went really in depth and explained it as best we could. And a lot of people seem to enjoy that video. So make sure to check it out if you haven't already. But it seems like this phone pay grocery delivery service is currently in the pilot stage. So currently this pilot is only happening in Bengaluru. And this app is going to be separate from the main phone pay app as the company wants to differentiate its payments from its commerce offerings. And while phone pay is definitely late to this party, we already have Zepto, Dunzo, Blinkit, Swiggy Instamart, and Flipkart Quick competing in this space, PhonePay is owned by Walmart, and Walmart might be happy to burn through millions and millions of dollars to acquire customers and market share. All right, next up, a couple of days ago, we got a comment from somebody wondering why we hadn't covered Cred's acquisition of Smallcase, and turns out that deal actually fell through. So these talks have apparently been happening for more than six months now, and this acquisition would make a lot of sense for Cred as they're planning to build an all-in-one financial app for the top 1% of Indians. They started off by enabling people to pay their credit card bill, then they enabled people to borrow, lend, shop, pay, and rent. And by acquiring small case, Cred would have become a key player in financial portfolio management. Now, it seems like a handful of Indian business media websites were saying that Cred had finalized this acquisition, which of course misled many people into thinking that it was was done, that the acquisition was completed, but that wasn't the case. And now we're finding out that both parties couldn't agree on Smallcase's valuation, so the deal fell through. According to a report in the morning context, Smallcase wanted a $500 million valuation and Cred didn't agree to this, so it didn't work out. All right, next up, just a quick update from our side here at Towards Ventures slash Backstage with Millionaires. And I posted about this on Twitter. Some of you guys might have seen it. We actually had our first day in our first office. Uh, we've never had an office before in the last three and a half years. Basically, we've all been work from home. We've been a remote team. Most of our team members have been scattered across the country. And always in India, we don't have people outside of India, but we've always been scattered across different states and different cities. So now the plan is to get everybody into one physical offline location so that, especially for video editing, it's a lot easier to hand an SD card over or a hard drive over to the other side of the room than it is to transfer gigabyte, you know, multiple gigabyte files across the internet. Sometimes that can take hours. And so that's really slowed our process down. Another reason why we're trying to get a space is so that we can set up a studio so that interviewing entrepreneurs is a more controlled and straightforward process rather than lugging all the gear over to whatever location we're going to be filming at and setting it up and certain spaces aren't as good as others. We've had success. We've also had a couple of technical failures and mishaps that have happened over the years. So it's going to be really nice to have a dedicated, controlled setting to record interviews going forward. And it'll also enable us to do that on a more regular basis. I just wanted to update you guys because I think it's fun. And it also, it's like a, watching a Marvel movie, right? When you get to the end and you get past the credits, then you get a little teaser or an Easter egg. So 
these are your little updates on what's going on here at Backstage with Millionaires and Towards Ventures. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and that you learned a lot from it. Big thanks now to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, our decacorns, and our hecticorns. And also big thanks to you for watching this video through to the end. All right, I will see you in the next one.